without you. <laughs> he was. He's still alive. Thank God. Thank <laughs> God. He's 62 years old. John Sakata, you guys. Hi, everybody. We were just Hi, remembering John Sakata. <laughs> John Sakata, just who sang just another day in the 80s. John Sakata. The reason that I was uh, reminiscing about John Sakata. We'll Don't get tell. To, we'll get oh, to the reason. We'll get to the reason in a bit. <laughs> But it just reminded me of cicada, cicada, tomato, <laughs> tomato, you know? <laughs> is he okay. alive? We need to make sure that John Cicada is alive. John, he's alive. He's still alive. Okay, he's, good. he's 62 years old. I just looked it up. I just Wikipedia'd John Cicada, something I didn't think I'd be doing this week. <laughs> but I did, in fact, Wikipedia, John Cicada. Everybody uh, survived the eclipse. Everybody do okay? The world continues to be here. We're here. The world has not ended. We're all here. There has here. been no rapture. There's... Everything is fine. <laughs> A lot of people are like, dang it. I know. <laughs> really disappointed. There was no rapture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it was cool, right? So like as we were talking before show, we, you know, we, w we went out onto the back deck and had our little trusty glasses on and yep. things looked weird and shadowy and the light was super weird for like a half an hour before. And then it went like total. And then we looked at it and then we were like, Neat. that's cool. All right. Time to go and inside. Then we were done. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what we did. I know, we just sat by the pool and we were like, okay, this is really neat. Look at that. It's just like, and then all and the fun. crickets came out. That was kind of neat that they came out because um, they're dumb and they got, and very, <laughs> got very confused. You could tell what animals were dumb and what animals weren't. My, our cows were like, whatever. We don't care. Yeah, our do my dogs were a little weirded out. They were like, Something is up. Yeah, and of course, ours, the birds all get quiet. They do. You know? Yeah. And ours got ours were kind of frozen. You know, our dogs just kind of stood there like, what? What's even going on right now? Like somebody <laughs> Should tells, we be eating right now? Right. <laughs> is it time for dinner? <laughs> it's all about the food. <gasps> all about it. Yeah. The roosters. What do the roosters cows do? Cool. The cows just went about their business because <laughs> they just didn't care. <laughs> they were just like, whatever, we're going to keep grazing. That's exactly yeah. what they did. Because even at nighttime, they just keep grazing. They just, I, feel they don't bad. I feel bad because like, you know, I guess it's a big treat to be in the path of totality. And so I feel bad for not getting more excited about it. But right. I just don't understand the, the emotions that people are having about it. Like the crying and the like just... Oh, like the overwhelming emotions from the yeah. meteorology. Like people are losing their shit about it. And I don't get it. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you're a meteorology geek, though, you're probably that it's like yesterday was your Super Bowl, you know? OK. All right. But so, like crying, like what yeah, is the causing crying. the emotions? I, I guess a lot of people say that it's because, you know, you you you, you think to yourself, the universe is bigger than me. It's like God is doing this. And so you feel like so, you feel so small and insignificant and it just overwhelms you with emotion. I said that to my daughter. My daughter's like, well, didn't they know that already? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you are your father's daughter. You have I do. I mean, right I thought it was neat. Like I was like, this is so yeah. cool. And then yeah. I went on about my business. <laughs> yeah. I so. mean, it was cool. It was really cool. Yeah, it was so, cool. And now it's done. And now it's done. Can I okay. just address a question from Jody really quickly? Did Mock do her portrait paintings when she was on break? And yes, we did. And they were posted uh -huh. for insiders and supporters. One more reason that you should be following those. I pages. have to say, yours is pretty good. Right? I was yeah. so surprised by myself. I don't understand. Like, you always are like, oh, I can't do art. I can't do this. Yeah, you can. Like, that I was kind of good. My. Yeah, yours was good. Mine would have been a stick figure. It just would have been like this little bald dude with little legs. That's all it would have been. I'd be like, here you go, honey. That's you. Would you see been. how Ron like made me like one of those um, Beetlejuice heads, like a tiny little yeah. head. It was just like this big. And Greg, my husband, he actually is really good. His probably would have been very elaborate and great. And it would have been, a, it would have been kind of like yours. It would have been really, really good. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that one is really good. It just looked like an actual person, which was I always amazing. say that Mock and my husband are very much alike in weird ways. It's very strange. <laughs> it's true. It's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, you guys, you need to go to bonefrog bonefrogcopy.com slash chicks and use code chicks to get 10% off your first order. And you can also get 15% off subscriptions, which are 
necessary. You have to get, once you, <laughs> once you like try it and you begin to like <laughs> Jones for it, which I do, cause I'm out of, I'm out now. Like I had my last one, like, I don't know, two days ago and I'm like two days without bone frog. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, you should get some bone frog at bonefrogcoffee.com. There's it. no better way to spend the morning than getting boned. Got to get boned, you guys. Got to get boned. Got to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Lori Mazamuro, thank you so much. Lori says, good morning, all. Congratulations to the Yukon Huskies. Bleed blue. So I understand they, that Purdue lost. They beat Purdue. Yeah. I'm, I was a... I'm a Purdue fan, you guys, so a little Did disappointing. But listen, they no, we didn't watch, but I listen, they made it, so that's good, right? Right? That's a big deal. Yeah. So mm -hmm. anyway. <laughs> I guess yay to Yukon. Good yay indeed to Yukon. Um, can I share before we get into the news, can I share the most lovely testimonial that we received about Healthy Cell? And of course, Healthy <coughs> Cell. We are absolutely obsessed with this particular product from Healthy Cell. Their vibrant hair, the skin, and nails best. gel pack. I mean, it's the changed my life. Essentially. Yeah, it's changed my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you tried all the things. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the first thing that you're actually seeing a difference from. I mean, I took that stupid Nutrafol stuff for like eight months. Didn't do anything. And, and that's this expensive. Is, it's so ridiculous. So this is the first step that's actually helped my hair. It's the best. Yeah. It's amazing. Everything, every product from healthycell.com slash chicks. Absolutely amazing. No matter what your issue might be, whether you're looking for something to support joint health and mobility, uh, focus and recall, sleeping, they have so, and then of course their multivitamins, which are fantastic. Um, but the hair, skin and nails thing is amazing. And Sue, Ma, you know what? I'm going to have to get my glasses. <laughs> Sue, because I don't want to mess up her name. It is Sue McConaughey. Sue McConaughey wrote, Hi, chicks. I have experienced hair loss for over 10 years and have tried every product to stop it, even doctor prescribed ones with no luck. After hearing Daisy's testimonial, I tried Healthy Cell, Healthy Cell Hair, Skin, and Nails Gel and after 30 days saw new hair growth. I am on the subscription plan now and I could not be happier. I have followed and enjoyed you since your indie radio days and am thrilled at your success as podcasters. You offer a unique mix of cutting edge news, commentary, humor, and friendship. Well done. Love and balls from Sue. That's so sweet, Sue. It Thank is. you. I mean, the stuff is amazing. You can get 20% off your first order at Healthy Cell when you go to healthycell.com slash chicks. Do it, do it, do it, do it. And don't forget to use the code. Code chicks. Use the code. All right. So speaking of the eclipse, so, you know, a lot of people very weirded out by the eclipse, con absolutely convinced that the world was going to end yesterday. Right. Like this was the, this was it. This was it was all going to be over. Lots of conspiracy theories were floating out there about all kinds of things um, and leave it to the view <laughs> to, to sound like complete morons about the eclipse and particularly Sonny Hostin. You know that it's bad when even Whoopi thinks she's a dumbass. And, it, and Whoopi made it very, very clear that Sonny Hostin was a dumbass in multiple ways in the clip that you're about to hear. Take a listen. So what's kind of crazy is with the earthquake on Friday and then the eclipse today, people are having all sorts of conspiracies about the end of the world. And then I read online that the earthquake epicenter was actually at Bedminster in New Jersey. Right. Fun fact. I, so it originated with Trump. I, have to say, I, I, I oh know, my God. right? I mean, I have to say, um, Karen Dupiche, our, our, wonderful, oh one my of our wonderful makeup artist, when the earthquake was happening, she put her coat on and she was like, Jesus is coming. Coming. I'm out. I'm, I'm out. I'm leaving. We've got a solar eclipse. Uh, we've she got the earthquake. The she ran down the hallway. <laughs> the rapture is here. The rapture's here. And then also I learned that the cicadas are coming. Cicadas. Cicadas. Although I love for the cicadas. first time in John Cicada. Cicada. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Two That's, different. No, two, no, well, they, this is what I read. Two, two different there's times. two different kinds of cicadas. Yes, two different times, times are coming. The good right. cicadas but, and the bad cicadas. But no. for the first time <laughs> in, in many, many years. No. Every 17 years this happens. Well, that's not what I read, but maybe, <laughs> but, you know, maybe well, you, know I mean, you don't have a lot of green. I, in I a way. say all those, all those things together, 
would maybe lead one to believe that, you know, either climate change exists that's more or something is more <laughs> <than> <laughs> <going> <laughs> returning. Earthquakes are not at the mercy of climate change. It's underground. No. It, can't, I don't it, think it, that's it happens that and the, and the, the, the <laughs> eclipse, they've known about the eclipse coming because eclipses happen and they actually can say when these things are going to happen. So all oh these folks God. who are saying, yeah. you know, it's a sign from God, God doesn't give you warning. <sighs> <laughs> it's John Sakata, you guys. John Cicada. It's John Cicada. I'm sorry. How dare you? <laughs> John Cicada. Uh -huh. What was the song that you sang again? Just another day Just another without day. you. That's yeah. right. You guys are going to look it up that now. That You're going to watch it. It's him on the beach with his shirt open. He's running around. <laughs> it's John Cicada. Yeah. <laughs> I completely forgot about that until yeah. you mentioned it this morning as a result of remember. Sonny being an idiot. <laughs> God bless I mean, the, the fact Sunny is trying to say the cicadas coming out and the solar eclipse are due to climate change. <laughs> Just what are everything? What is happening? Listen, when Trump wins this year, it's going to be due to climate change. That's what they're going to say. <laughs> That's honestly, just mark my words. They're going to say it. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. um, John Newbaum, thank you very much. John says, Congratulations to the NAIA who voted 20 to 0 to ban transgenders from participating in women's sports. Riley Gaines must be thrilled. Yeah, that was. That was a little speck of good news, right? It was a great speck of good news. A lot of people are thrilled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, one more thing about the eclipse, and then we'll move on to the big news of the day, which, of course, is Trump's big abortion statement, <clears throat> uh, which came out yesterday, and people are questioning the timing of that. We'll hear about that, too. But Trump also released an eclipse ad, for lack of a better <laughs> word, and it was <laughs> so Trumpy and great. <laughs> It's so Fantastic. <laughs> Greatest ad ever. I mean, that was pretty good. Honestly. You can't not get pumped no. when you watch that. <laughs> well, liberals are crying. They're all crying in, in the fetal position. They can't take it. They can't. He's comparing himself to a solar eclipse now. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's such a <laughs> dictator. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Everybody needs to get over people it. People are humorless. <laughs> um, I forgot to mention that... Uh, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian's daughter, North West, who is mm -hmm. now 10 years old, um, is making $30,000 per social media post. On TikTok, right? A 10-year-old. Right? On TikTok. I think so. She's got 19 million followers. Um, and so she's making 30 grand. Estimated. They're estimating that she's making 30 grand per post. A 10-year-old. Yeah. And her mom is helping her. I mean, kind of kinda like, kind of like Kim's mom helped her <laughs> with, with the sex tape. Right. All right. I mean, nothing like nothing like pimping out your kid, right? Nothing like it. Nothing I mean, like it. it's America, right? We reward mm -hmm. the worst dreads of society, and that is just one more example. Yeah. Um, big day yesterday, not just because of the eclipse, but because Trump released his long awaited official abortion statement. And it was a four and a half minute or so video. Um, we're not going to play, obviously, by now, probably most folks have seen it. If you haven't, you're welcome to go watch that. But the essence of it was that forever um, he has believed that this is a state's right 
rights issue. And that was essentially his position, that he believes people need to follow their conscience and their hearts and that states are going to handle this differently and that people are going to vote differently for their legislatures depending on where they are. But essentially, this is a constitutional thing and he believes it rests with the states. And that was the statement. And cue the world exploding over it, right? Because <laughs> there was no way he could really make a statement about abortion at all and take any position without there being backlash. There's no winning on this issue. There just isn't. Well, he's he's not changed his stance on it. That's why I don't know why everybody's freaking out so much right now. He's not he's not changed anything. He said how he felt about this years ago. He is saying exactly how he feels about it now, which is the same as how he felt about it years ago. So there's no flip-flopping. I why why are we freaking out about this? What's the big deal? Well, I, we'll have a lot of reaction to comb through and unpack, I guess. We'll kick it off uh, with the Massachusetts governor, Democrat uh, Healy. And she was on with Caitlin Collins to talk about her reaction. And she's one of a zillion people who are super mad, although not for the same reasons that some conservatives are mad. Obviously, here is uh, Mara Healy. Will energize their voters come this fall. Let's get straight to my source on this tonight. Democratic governor of Massachusetts, Mara Healy, who tore into the former president and called him a threat to the rights and the health care of women. Governor, it's great to have you here today. I mean, what did you make of the fact that in this statement and putting this out today, Donald Trump is really avoiding taking any position on when he believes abortion should be banned? That's true. Well, I think we can't let Donald Trump lie his way out of this. Caitlin, what he said oh today God. in this video is that he is proud to have overturned Roe. He claimed responsibility for that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that his today's statement made clear that he supports abortion bans in states all over this country. And because of Donald Trump, one in three American women right now live under an abortion ban. Donald Trump is a direct threat to women and a direct threat to reproductive freedom. That's who he is. That's who he continues to be. That's what he said today. I mean, I okay, these people are lunatics. So <laughs> he, okay, if he says, I, I take responsibility for the overturn of Roe v. Wade, all right, well, what he's saying is, it, then now the states get to decide what they want to do with this issue, which is essentially what he's saying. So how <laughs> right. is that lying? How is, how? Somebody explain to me how that's lying. He's not, he's just being consistent. That's what he's being. And so why would we not want him to be consistent? Oh my God, a politician's being consistent? Look at that. <laughs> Wow, that's, that's crazy. Rarity. So yeah. make a note of it. <laughs> that oh doesn't God. happen very often. I know, but people people are freaking out. Matthew Dowd um, also had some criticism about this. He thinks that Trump made the wrong political calculus. Um, and I'll let him explain. I actually think he's taken the worst possible political position, which is amazing when they think, as Garrett was reporting, they think in Mar-a-Lago he took a good political position. Here's what's going to happen. One, I agree with Victoria. It's still going to motivate Democrats in the course of this. So Democrats are still going to be motivated. Two, it's going to demotivate part of Donald Trump's base, as already evidenced by some of the things they've said, where they wanted a federal ban and they wanted to get rid of abortion, not only in places like Texas, Florida, but California and New York. So it's going to demotivate part of his base. And three, he still is going to have to answer the question every time a state does something th that restricts abortion in this, because he's opened the door to say states can do whatever they want. That means he's going to have to answer, well, do you agree with what Florida did? Do you agree with what Texas did? Do you agree with Alabama? Do you agree with Mississippi? And so I think, and then I don't often agree with Lindsey Graham, but from a political perspective, he would have been better off, I think, going for a 15-week or a 16-week federal policy on this because he it can still motivate his base. And there are some swing voters that agree with that line, but I think he's taken the worst possible political position. Well, he can believe that. It is interesting, though, because I think he could have gone either way where he could have done what many, many European countries have done, which is to say, yeah, I am in support of a federal ban at 15 weeks, like France, for example, mm -hmm. um, I, I would be supportive of that. He could have taken that track and then there would have been people complaining about it. Like the, there would have been lots of people in the pro-life movement who would have been super, super mad. Um, but I, I, 
I, I don't know which is the better decision. I don't know if I agree with Matthew Dowd that he made the wrong decision. I understand his points. But the, the fact remains is Trump could not have made a right decision. Right. There is no right decision. I was just going to say that. Yeah, he, there was he was he's not going to win on this issue. He can't, we're, we're he can't we win. will never win on this issue as Republicans. We're not going to win on this issue because there is no winning. Yeah, How it's about a just losing issue. Maybe just don't kill your kid. I there's a <laughs> that's a stance. That's a stance that I mean I would take that stance, but you can't say that, right? You can't you I we're never going to win on this issue, which is why I hope that during this election, uh, at least this campaign cycle, people aren't thinking so much about murdering their babies as they are, you know what? I can't put food on the table for my existing babies because right. everything sucks so hard right now in this economy. I don't feel safe when I leave my house. There's, I mean, I'm worried about the future of my existing children. I'm worried about the future of uh, like other people's children. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff going on. And I think that Democrats will use this. They're going to try so hard. They're, that's why you're going to see so much abortion talk over the next couple months is because this is the one thing that they can win on or they, yeah. at least they have won on in the past and they scare women about it and they're going to try their damnedest to do it. They will, because for, for Democrats, it is a highly motivating issue. Oh, yeah. And to Matt Dowd's point, I mean, I think he does have a point that Trump might have fared he might have gotten off easier, so to speak, if he would have said, I support a 15 week federal ban, because then his position could have always been no matter what anybody says, he could be like, I'm pro-life. I hate abortion in, in any circumstance, but it's clear our country is never going to unite 100 percent on this. I would like to stop as many abortions as I can. So at least we're stopping anything after 15 weeks. I would love to do more. But right now, I would like to support this. That would have been easier for him, I think, than the decision he's made now, because to Matt's point, now he's going to have to answer questions every time a state does something right. They're all going to handle this differently. He's always going to be asked about it. It's not just one position now. Do you know what I mean? I do. But I, don't, but I, still, I don't argue his I don't argue the position. I, know, I hear you. I agree with him that I it should you. be a state's right. But I issue. still think I still think they're going to he's going to have to answer questions no matter what, even if it was a 15 weeks, if it was at 20 weeks, it, it was at six weeks. You know what I mean? There's right. still going to be questions. They're still they're still going to try to use this as as ammo against, you know, the, as, as against us, they're yeah. going to, this is cause this is what Democrats do. This is what they yep. do. Absolutely. This is a winning issue for Democrats. Mm -hmm. It always has been, it always will be. Right. It sucks that we have to talk about it. Um, and I hate it. I and hate I've, that and it's I ever will, a campaign issue. Right. I hate it too. And I will, I will go back to the fact that he has remained consistent on how he feels about it. So I give him props for that. I do. And to your point, here he is in 2016 saying exactly the same thing. Trump, you're pro-life. But I, I want to ask you specifically, do you want the court, including the justices that you will name, to overturn Roe v. Wade, which includes, in fact, states, a woman's right to abortion? Well, if that would happen, because I am pro-life and I will be appointing pro-life judges, I would think that that will go back to the individual states. But I'm asking you specifically, would you if like they to overturned it? It'll go back to the states. But what I'm asking you, sir, is do you want to see the court overturned? You just said you want to see the court protect the Second Amendment. Do you want to see the court overturn? Roe well, v. if Wade? we put another two or perhaps three justices on, that's really what's going to be. Ha that's will happen. And that'll happen automatically, in my opinion, because I am putting pro-life justices on the court. I will say this. It will go back to the states. And the states will then make a determination. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, go figure. He's saying what he means and he means what he says. So I, I, how can you not like that? I, well, I mean, you, there's all kinds of people don't like it for all the reasons the different people would have hated if he, if he would have taken a different track. There was no winning. That's mm -hmm. why I just feel I don't I don't fault him for the position he took at all. I, nope. I don't at all. The reaction has been so all over the place, even amongst pro-life groups. So, for example, um, the Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America president, Marjorie Dannon Felser, <laughs> released a statement super, super upset about Trump's stance, saying that they're deeply disappointed. You know, unborn children and their moms deserve national protections, national advocacy. They wanted a national ban. Um, and they said that Trump saying that the issue is back to the states seeds the debate 
to Democrats who are always working relentlessly to enact legislation mandating abortion throughout all nine months of pregnancy. And if they're successful, they will wipe out states' rights. So that's one pro-life group who is super, super upset. But we'll go through quickly some of the other reaction because, again, it's all over the place, which just proves the point again. Trump could not have made a right decision. There is no right decision on this. There just isn't. Liz Wheeler uh, said whether an innocent person lives or dies should never be left to popular vote or the will of the people. My God. And I mean that as a prayer. What is the limiting principle on this? Um, and then, of course, my name uh, today, Mock Pence, is for Mike Pence, who was saying that this was a slap in the face to the millions of pro-life Americans who voted for him in 2016 and 2020. I just totally disagree with that. I absolutely I disagree, too. I just could not disagree with him I more. Mike Pence is just really mad right now. He's him. mad. He's super he's, mad. He's got all the mads right now. <laughs> he's so huh? mad. Yeah. <laughs> Bryson Gray uh, said, I don't care enough about winning rigged elections to compromise on abortion. Sorry, not sorry. Um, let's see. We've got Jenna I care. Ellis. I care about winning elections. I absolutely exactly. care. You can't and make I think any it's... changes without winning elections. Right. I mean, so so basically over this issue, people that are pro-life are willing to throw away the entire election over this one issue. OK, well, have fun with your freaking life. And have, have fun, fun with way more abortions as a result. Exactly. I mean, how <laughs> is that winning on our side? I know. These I know. It's so frustrating. Get a grip. Oh, my God. Jenna Ellis called him weak, said Trump punted on the issue of pro-life, pledged to support whatever states decide, including blue states that will allow abortion until the moment of birth. Follow your heart, she says, is a hallmark card, not strong, conservative, principled policy. Listen, you cannot have strong, conservative, principled policy if you don't have conservatives in office. Bingo. I don't know oh why God. that seems to escape so many people. But Lila Rose also uh, said killing babies is always wrong. President Trump is not a pro-life candidate. He's far less pro-abortion than Biden, but he supports killing some pre-born children and will even make that his position in an attempt to get pro-abortion votes. Again, all you have to do is look back to how he actually led and the justices that he put in place yeah. to see what his stances are. Yeah. He who, wants to get elected. Exactly. So who is the one who change. overturned Roe v. Wade? Who did it? Who did this that? This is the thing. Who did it? <laughs> I know. I, it's just so frustrating. Um, and here's a poll that I thought was interesting. I thought that we'd just throw this in here wh about where most of the country is on abortion. Moving ahead, though, to the second trimester, and that's where public opinion shifts. Now you've only got 34 percent who say that abortion in that time frame should be legal in most or all cases. You've got two thirds basically saying it should be illegal in most or all cases. And then you move to the third trimester and you see an even more dramatic movement there. Less than 20 percent believe abortion in the third trimester should be legal in most or all cases. Eight out people? of 10 voters who saying it should be illegal in most or all cases. Oh my God. Seriously, who is who are the 20 percent? Right. <clears throat> what is wrong with can you? you imagine reassess your entire life look at yourself in the mirror like uh, raise your hand and then promptly punch yourself in the face <laughs> what is Not wrong that with we you? condone violence I on this show i absolutely condone it in this particular case because <laughs> if you are can if you think that that's okay in the third trimester it's not okay ever but in the third trimester uh, what is wrong with you I know. Like sick and twisted, man. That's just gross. So, so, so gross. sick and twisted. Oh, my God. Um, lots more reaction about that to get to. But I just wanted to brag for a moment, not only about my beautiful jade plant that I got from FastGrowingTrees.com. It is awesome. Um, it's not it dead. So pretty? It is no, not dead. You it guys. is thriving. So Thank alive. Thank you very much. But also, oh, look at <laughs> Um Also, my lilac tree is in full like i don't have the flowers yet but i'm expecting some like any second because it's so green and that's amazing not not even like it's amazing because indiana weather is so borked i understand that while i was gone last week there was snow like there was snow one night there was like super freezing temperatures and that tree man it was like i have got this i am going to be okay <laughs> And it is. It's going to be so amazing, you guys. The lilac tree. How is your avocado tree? It's there. It's like it's going. It's growing. See? It's not dead either. I'm pretty excited about it. It's going to take a year for me to get avocados, but I'm waiting patiently.
and that's but that's mm -hmm. great and the thing is fast growing trees makes people like us who do not have green thumbs at all they make us feel like gardeners essentially because right. we're growing yeah. all this amazing stuff mm -hmm. this is why um by the way they're the biggest online nursery in the entire country they have ten thousand different kinds of plants over two million happy customers of course we are included in that and i cannot say enough good stuff about them right now uh they have the best deals ever online there's up to half off on selected plants and you can figure out what plants might work best for you based on your zone. So they put you, your geographical location, they base it into a zone and then they tell you, here's the stuff that's gonna thrive in your area, in your climate. They make it all so easy. Um, and listeners of our show get an additional 15% off their first purchase when you use code CHICKS at checkout at fastgrowingtrees.com. And um, this offer is valid, by the way, for a limited time. So make sure to tell them that we sent you fastgrowingtrees.com use code chicks get yourself a jade plant or get yourself an avocado tree or a lilac plant or whatever they're amazing amazing <laughs> um okay so back to some more reaction we're gonna flip it to conservatives who actually were very much in favor of what trump said including charles cw cook who said this is the correct constitutional position exactly given the limited powers of the federal government yes Right. Uh, Michael Knowles also weighed in and said uh, regarding criticism of Trump's abortion statement, has there been or could there be today any even remotely electable GOP presidential candidate with a different view? One hopes that things improve as the pro-life movement advances. But what better option could there be today? Exactly. Exactly. And listen, I, and Charles C.W. Cook is spot on from a constitutional standpoint. That is exactly how he should respond. Yeah. This is precisely how he should handle it. So bravo to Trump. Uh, and then surprisingly, because, uh, you know, contrary to Lila Rose and others in the pro-life movement, Kristen Hawkins, who you've seen do a lot of like man on the street type of fights about abortion with, right. with people. She's, She's very, awesome. very pro-life. I post a lot of her stuff on Instagram. Yeah. She's fantastic. She, she took a completely different and much more reasonable, I think, approach. And she said, I'm seeing a lot of concern about this. I get it. We at the pro-life generation are 100 percent for a national pro-life law. However, we need to stop and consider a few things. GOP insiders were calling for a 15 or 16 week limit on abortion, which would have allowed more than nine out of 10 abortions to continue and by either intent or by accident would set up a very tough European like stalemate on abortion. And she goes on to say. Staking out a federal standard on abortion that would undermine the positions of many other states that have acted with courage to protect women and children and could have hurt uh, our movement's work to pass strong pro-life legislation and elect <coughs> courageous pro-life leaders who will work with us to end all abortions or at least when a child's heartbeat could be heard. This position keeps the pressure on Democrats and their abortion extremism instead of letting their fundraising machines stir up their radical base over threats about a late-term abortion ban that would only save four to 6% of children. There is much that Trump must still do to protect innocent children if reelected, starting with pro-life appointments, blah, 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 um, to undo the radical actions of Joe Biden. But our ultimate goal in the pro-life movement is the federal protection of human life. Your human right not to be killed shouldn't begin or end at a state line. However, it's gonna take time to get there. Yes. And the votes we need in the Senate and state legislatures. That's why we're working nonstop to grow and mobilize our movement for this long fight. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Trump made the right call. And this leaves room for better action to be taken down the road. I agree with her 150%. Right? Bra. You're right. It's, it, yes. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And all these people are like, we want it now. We want it now. Well, simmer. And you're not going to get elected. And then you're going to have more abortions. Yes. It's got exactly. to be strategic. And I think that that is why he made the yes. decision he this did. Is, now, Lindsay. Is, is the, oh, my God. Girl Lindsay, is upset. <laughs> <laughs> Girl is having some problems. Oh, Lindsay, man. Yes. And now Trump is going after him like crazy. So Lindsay said, I respectfully disagree with Trump's statement that abortion is a state's right issue. Dobbs does not require that conclusion legally. And the pro-life movement has always been about the well-being of the unborn child, not 
geography. He says, I will continue to advocate that there should be a national minimum standard limiting abortion at 15 weeks because the child is capable of feeling pain with exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. However, until we achieve this goal, the least we can do is provide anesthesia to an unborn child facing an abortion at 15 weeks because they feel pain. And that's fine. Like new legislation requiring providers to administer anesthesia. Great. I'm that's all about it. But Trump was furious at this and said, I mean, he went on a tear, you guys. He said, Lindsey Graham is doing a great disservice to the party and to our country. At first, he wanted no abortions under any circumstances. Then he was up to six weeks. Now he's up to 15. But what he doesn't understand, or perhaps he does, is the radical left Democrats who are destroying our country will never approve anything that he and the Republicans want. They love this issue, and they want to keep it going for as long as Republicans will allow him to do so. Exactly. He's so right. Oh, my God. A hundred percent said correct. Yep. Terminating Roe v. Wade was, according to all legal scholars, a great event, but sometimes with great events come difficulties. Many good Republicans lost elections because of this issue, and people like Lindsey that are unrelenting are handing Democrats their dream of the House, Senate, and perhaps even the presidency. Yes. He said, by allowing states to make the decision and hoping that most Republicans running for office will have the sense, although they must always follow their heart, to require exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother, we have taken the abortion issue largely out of place. Play. When the Supreme Court had the courage to do the right thing legally and terminate Roe v. Wade, all these people, including Lindsay and Marjorie Dannenfelser of Susan B. Anthony, that were hardliners one day after the victory, were gone and absolutely no help as Democrats staged rallies and won elections that they never should have won. Yes. So, I mean, he's absolutely He is right. spot on with that. Yes. Yeah, so yep. suck it, Lindsay. <laughs> suck it. And he wasn't done. He's like, he said, Lindsay should spend more time focusing on all the many people being killed because of our now non-existent border yeah. and the millions of people dying in senseless, never-ending wars that he constantly favors and promotes and should spend less time on taking away our great Roe v. Wade victory of sending a complicated and controversial issue back to the states where it belongs. Oh, dang. And then even more. He said, <laughs> Lindsay and Marjorie should study the 10th Amendment and state rights. When they do, they should proudly get on with helping Republicans to win elections rather than making it impossible for them to do so. I blame myself for Lindsey Graham because the only reason he won in South Carolina is because I endorsed him. Preach. <laughs> Preach. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's, he's right. He's so right. So right. And that that that's really the essence, right? He is all about winning. And once he wins, then he continues to do the pro-life you know stuff. What? And so am I. I am too. We need to win to be able to actually implement policies. You can't implement conservative policies unless you're there. Right. And My you're not going to get there by right. being a hardliner on this. You just won't. Yeah. And Lindsay um, can like pound his little chest all he wants. <laughs> his <laughs> moves. He, can pound, he can pound his moves all he wants to, <laughs> but he, but the way that he, that Trump called him out here and the, the timing of when he pounds his moves is very suspect. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, just take all the seats, yeah. let, let the grownups do the grown up work. And Trump's right about some of these pro-life groups who get super excited to say, you know, to be hardliners and say yeah. no abortions at any point ever, ever, ever. And then as soon as all the elections get lost, they're nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. And right. so it's very easy for them to criticize Trump on taking a position. But they're, but it's very hypocritical also because you can't make changes to the pro-life, for the pro-life movement without being elected. Well, and I mean, that's it what he's focused on. It doesn't matter to, to, to Lindsey Graham because he's still taking a paycheck from all of us, right? right? His life is cushy, you know? So he can just stand up and pound his moves and like, oh, I'm upset about this. <laughs> just take all the seats. Scott Jennings on CNN um, thought that this was probably a pretty wise track for Trump to take. Scott, I want to get your reaction to part of President Biden's response in which he accuses Trump of lying. Let me put it up on the screen. The screen that Trump is scrambling. He's worried that since he's the one responsible for overturning Roe, the voters will hold him accountable in 2024. So Scott, how concerned should Republicans be that voters will hold Trump responsible? 
Well, look, the, the, the voters who are motivated by this issue will absolutely hold Donald Trump responsible. And that cuts both ways. For the pro-life voters who wanted to see Roe go away, he's responsible for it. And for the people who uh, lean Karen's way, uh, they also hold Trump responsible for it. The question is, uh, is this going to be the top issue in the election? And that's really the friction between the two campaigns. The Biden campaign wants this election to be largely about abortion and other cultural issues. The Trump campaign, uh, they announced their position today, Wolf, on Eclipse Day because they're hoping this issue is eclipsed by the economy, immigration, the border, what have you. And so whatever Donald Trump's position is, he said it today. Some people are happy. Some people are not. The Democrats are going to call him extreme on it. The real question is, can Democrats elevate this up the line and make it more important than, say, food prices or the border chaos exactly. or crime? And I'm dubious they can do that. Let's hope. Let's hope that they cannot do that. Yeah. And then if there's anybody out there who's still concerned about Trump's position, um, fantastic clip you're about to see from a fellow by the name of John Doyle, who puts this in the, the best possible perspective um, and says it better than I ever could. I thought this was amazing. And so here it's, it runs a little bit long, but I think this is a nice way to end the topic uh, on this because this was really, really good. So I was saying that nationalism is going to breed the conditions necessary for social conservatism, for more Christian policies, rather than the opposite. So it's to say that if we wanted to have a candidate running for political office who is just the most Christian, well, we would have had President Mike Huckabee by now. But we haven't because mm. people in America have become so calloused and they've become so polluted by sin that when they hear messaging like that that wants to compel them legally to be more virtuous, it, it almost repulses them mm -hmm. and they won't vote for it. I wish that weren't the case, but it is. But if you have someone like Donald Trump who can get in there and say, well, I want to close the border, I want to bring back jobs, I want to do this, and he makes you know things like abortion an accessory to his campaign, it's uh -huh. like, oh, and I'm going to appoint pro-life justices, but he really didn't speak about that that much. Well, he gets in office and now all of a sudden he appoints justices and that yeah. leads to the conditions that overturned Roe v. Wade. Yeah. 50 years of pro-life activism, the crown jewel was we have to overturn Roe v. Wade. And yeah. the guy that ultimately facilitated that, mm -hmm. not to discredit the, the work that the pro-life organizations have done, right. but it was the guy who frankly they were attacking in 2015 because they were like, mm -hmm. well, he used to be pro-choice. He's probably paid for abortions, but it's like, that's true. But we need to get a guy in there who can move the ball down the field. Right. And because yeah. we tend to be a more virtuous group of people, I think, we have problems playing the game the way that the Democrats play the game, which is to yes. say Democrats will st say, I'm not in favor of that. I'm not going to do that. They will be creative with their presentation of what they intend to do. And then they get into office and they govern in complete opposition to how they said. Is it wrong as say someone running for president or running for senate or whatever as a, as a republican to say well my position on abortion is that i want to give it back to the states i'm more moderate maybe i yeah. you know whatever and then you get into office and now all of a sudden you staff your administration with radical pro-lifers and you govern like it's the handmaid's tale or something you're saving <laughs> lives on the net you are saving lives and the problem with the pro-life organizations mm. is that there's a lot of money to be made by getting up in front of a crowd of people and saying, I think killing babies is wrong. Uh -huh. And everyone claps. Yes. So true. Like it, it's honestly, it's a form of virtue signaling on the right is to uh -huh. say killing babies is wrong and everyone claps and they give you money. Yes, but do you want to save lives? Because if you want to save lives, you got to kind of get in the mud and, and okay. work your way That's through that system. Right. And so my problem with Trump is a personal sort of, I wish that he, you know, maybe had more Christian positions on these things, but ultimately, like, I'm not looking at him as a sort of avatar of, you know, Christ-like behavior. I'm looking at him as a guy who can get into the system and create opportunities for guys who maybe are more inclined to uh, be convicted and have deep convictions on these things to then get in and move the ball down the field. And you know what? That, oh my God, that's, that was beautiful, beautifully right? put. But that could be applied to so many other things too when mm -hmm. it comes to Trump. I feel that way about Trump, about so many other issues too. He's not my preacher. He's not my boyfriend. He's not my husband. I don't care about any of that crap, but he can move the ball down the field. Mm -hmm. And that is what we need him for. He is a great player. He's literally the best quarterback ever. <laughs> Just get him <laughs> on the field and he can move the ball. I don't care what he does when he's off the field. I don't care. And I like, I fight with people about that on freaking Instagram. It drives me crazy when people are like, how can you be a conservative Christian and like a guy who said, grab him by the whatever? Oh, how can geez. you be a conservative Christian and like a guy who wasn't like, I don't know, canoodling with the stripper? I don't care. <laughs> I just want a guy who can run a company and move the ball down the field. And he's the best guy for the job, period.
boom. Mm-hmm. I think we can put a cap on this topic. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd really like to, because I just don't want this to be a campaign topic. It's, go- it's going to be. It's going to be. It's going to permeate every CNN, MSNBC, CBS, all the... All the mainstream media channels are going to, see, they're going to be saturated with this for yeah. the next six months. Just watch. It's all they're going to talk about, you guys. It's exhausting, mm-hmm. you guys. Um, when the world is ending, and, it, you know, I'm glad that it didn't yesterday. I know a lot of people thought it might. Um, and it probably will for all kinds of other reasons. Since <laughs> everything is on fire right now, literally everything across the world is on fire. It would do you well. It would serve you and your family well to be prepared. And there's no better place to get prepared for any potential disaster than for patriots.com slash chicks for the number four patriots.com slash chicks right now. Uh, they've got sales on the deluxe three month survival food kit. This is the perfect thing because it's lasts for 25 years. You can just store it in your pantry, store it in your garage, wherever 25 years it lasts and it provides three months of food that's actually really, really good uh, in the event that you need it in an emergency. Right now, it's 712 servings, okay, of delicious, nutritious, super easy to make meals that will protect you. And then when you buy right now, they're throwing in a new gift package worth $363. That's for free. There's 15 of their top rated survival items, two of their best selling 72 hour survival food kits, all that's included. Check it out at fourpatriots.com slash chicks, fourpatriots.com slash so many people just say thank you to Vanessa Kilgore. Thank you. She says, yay, caught y'all today. I missed yesterday because of school duty. I fight liberal nonsense in my classroom every day. And also I'm a new insider. Well, thank you, Vanessa. Yay. Yay. That's awesome. Fantastic. Andrea Viola. Thank you. Andrea says, if women were truly independent, there would be no need for abortion as they would be 100% responsible for birth control. Men need to have a say. Interesting take. Uh, she also says, Ms. Lindsay is a war pig. Now he cares about life. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Seriously. <laughs> That's what Trump went after him for, which I thought was very And he should go after him for that. I want mm-hmm. my money back from Ukraine and all the pensions. <laughs> yes. Karen Elliott, thank you. Karen says, you can't change the heart of a pro-abortion leftist. Only God can. The... Help me. I can't. Okay. The... The the W and pray for the what rest. I don't. Oh, I don't know. can't translate it. I don't know. You guys don't the last know. sentences. I don't, I don't know. know. I'm sorry. <laughs> and Jose Rodriguez, thank you so much. Jose says Trump is not perfect. He's perfect for the job. Yes. Woman from Texas. <laughs> yes, Jose. All right, uh, let's move on because Biden is still trying to cancel all kinds of student loans, which is making me crazy because it's literally so the Supreme Court said. You can't do that. And he just keeps doing it. Um, So he put out this video yesterday. Day one, my administration has been committed to fixing (laughs) the broken student loan system and making sure higher education is a ticket to the middle class, not a barrier. My administration has approved debt cancellation for 4 million Americans through various actions. And today I'm announcing new plans that would cancel student debt for millions more. In total, these plans would cancel some or all student debt for 30 million Americans oh and combine God. with everything we've done so far. To find out how these plans may impact you, visit studentaid.gov. Okay, I know I'm supposed to be listening to him. You're going to have to go back to that picture. And I, okay. I know I'm supposed to be listening to him about student debt and how we're all paying for other people's student with debt now, right? For- but you guys, look at his face. Is it just me or does he have chin balls? (laughs) (laughs) Look at his face. He went to a plastic surgeon at some point. He went to a plastic surgeon and he's effed with his face. I mean, like we all know he's effed with his face, right? Because he looks completely different than he did 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But look at his chin balls are falling. Like (laughs) whoever put the chin balls in, (laughs) like... Well, they're moving around or something's going on in there where he needs to get the chin balls fixed or like moved or what is that? What's happening? Somebody now, ex- now I'm not going to be able to unsee this. Well, it's they're right. They're here. <laughs> uh, what's why he's a Balchinian. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
Did he go into a surgeon and ask for the Peter Griffin? Like what I mean, happened? Like what is going on with the chin balls? I can't <laughs> stop looking at them. So I know I'm supposed to be concentrating on professional things, but I, is it just me? I know Mandy. No, never now I see totally it. see it. Now everybody's I see it with and... me. I can't be the only one that sees this. It's the chin balls. I can't. This was the meanest thing you've ever done. I'm sorry. Just to point this out. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. I cannot and now be none the of only us, one. None I of us can't. can unsee. None of us. Look how horrific that is. It's bad. It's really bad. And I can't believe I didn't notice it until you said it. Oh but my yeah, God. they're it's bad. Just, like that surgeon needs to just oh my God. give up his license. Wow. It's so bad. It's, it's, somebody said it's the only set of balls he has. That's right. And they're on his chin. <laughs> anyway. All right. I just needed to point that out. Well, and just quick flashback, if we could, to Nancy Pelosi. I can't remember when this was. It was, I think it was early on in Joe Biden's presidency. Yes. But I think it, it bears repeating uh, many, many times over and over and over again. People think that the president of the United States, is this more on the subject than you ever want to know? Will you let me know? People think that the president of the United States has the power for debt forgiveness. He does not. He no. can postpone, Can't he do can that. delay, but he does not have that power. That, that. Would, that has to be an act of Congress. Oh, okay. That's, well, that's so weird. That's he news doing to it. Joe. Somebody needs to alert Joe. Somebody <laughs> needs to alert old shimballs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That is I know, right? the worst. Like, By the way, um, he, he okay, so... Nancy Pelosi is saying that there's no way that he can. How did she put it? He can't cancel. No, that's not. That was he can his delay word. it. He can he delay, can delay it, it, but he can't like just end it, right? Right. But he keeps using the word canceling. I'm right. canceling student debt. Mm -hmm. That is a bunch of bullshit, you guys. It just means he's transferring the debt to, to all taxpayers. <laughs> We're a lot it. of us who already spent the money on our own totally. damn education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't oh. get it. But and that's the thing that also is infuriating is whenever he, he gets up there, like he did it with the bridge collapse. He's done it with other things too. He's like, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take care of this. I'm like, I'm doing right. this for you. I'm such a benevolent. I'm such a good guy with these giant chin balls. <laughs> like, I'm such a good guy. I'm going to take care of all this for you. Look how <laughs> awesome I am. And I'm going to try to buy your votes with this when in essence we're paying for it. Right. It's us. We're doing it. And he's and it's unconstitutional. Like you're a dictator. Yeah, according to Nancy Pelosi, even. Yeah. <laughs> I just this guy is a it, piece of work. I know. I, it makes me so mad. And what they should be focused on is the fact that our social security and Medicare programs are basically going to end like way sooner than I think any of us really realize. So I got that the annual email saying, Hey, your social security statement is ready. And I was like, I'm gonna go look at that. And what I saw. Um, was, you know, like all the regular statement. But I also saw this, which is the question. It's a flyer from the Social Security Department or Social Security that says, will it be there for me? And they talk about, here's how we oh form the God. trust. Here's how we're, how we're doing on the money. But then it says the combined total is enough to pay out and on time until 2034. At that point, they can only pay out about $800 of every due $1,000. And I don't know for how long they can do that. So starting in just 10 years, you guys, it's not going to be there for, for those of us who are going to be looking to it at around that time. It, and it's going to get worse because nobody, except for Nikki Haley, nobody was willing to talk about this right. on the Republican side. Nobody's willing to make hard decisions about it. So here we are. This and is, is that how it is. Is that what it's going to take for everybody to seriously, like, just lose their shit? Maybe. I mean, and go enough is enough. Is that what it's going to take when people, when we start? Because we're what we're seeing is illegals getting all of their crap paid for. We're yep. seeing people who aren't even citizens that have never paid into the system, who have literally broken the law to bust over our border. And we're paying for three squares. We're paying for all their health care. We're giving them like places to live. We're giving, I mean, these people are getting everything paid for. Right. Mm -hmm. And then is that what it's going to take? Is it going to take when they stop giving us people who have, I've been paying into social security since I was 13 years old. I've had a job since I was 13. So is that what it's going to take for people to see, oh my God, they're not giving me my social security. 
they t- they stole from me. I mean, because they're already stealing from us. So what's it going to take for people to say enough is enough, enough? Because if I we don't win don't this know. election, because it, it's not a it, it's not a shoe in, you guys. It's just not. No, oh, not even people, close. Like half this country still thinks that Democrats give a shit about them, which is just it's. I mean, it's crazy to me. It's cr- these people are lunatics. But if 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 that if we don't win it. This, I, it will be, I think 20, 2034 will become earlier. You know, I mean, we're going to run out yeah. of it sooner than 2034. I mean, it, it can't, we can't just continue to ignore it. No. And like people can't just continue to be like, oh, we'll figure that out It'll the next election. Yeah. It's, this is, because it's I'll, a crisis now. Right. Cause I say this to family members and they're like, oh, but they've been saying this forever. And it's like, we always still get it. But will we? I mean, there's because <laughs> eventually you run out of other people's money. We are the other people, right? They're going to run out of our money, and they're and they're starting to. It's happening. And no matter how much the Biden administration wants you to believe that everything is just rocking and rolling in the economy, one of the worst indicators ever is the fact that gas prices are going up, oil prices are going up, and here is some analysis about that very thing. It's bad. As Andy said, quote, it's the most serious threat to the economy. Nothing does more damage to the economy more quickly than higher oil prices. Now, remember, the higher oil prices go, the more all of us have to pay for gas at the pump. The national average today is up to 360 a gallon. That is a fresh five month high. That's up six cents in a week, 20 cents over the past month. And if gas prices go too high, that could also unwind some of the progress on the inflation front. And that could delay when the Fed can start cutting interest rates or even by how much the Fed cuts rates. There also could be significant political consequences here. Moody's has a a model out there, a forecasting model, that finds gas prices are a key variable in the November election. How key? Well, Moody said that if gas prices hit $4 a gallon and stay above there, that alone could be enough for Donald Trump to win the White House. Yeah, gas prices were two thirty nine a gallon when he took office, and now what did he say? It was like almost four dollars a gallon is the average. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so I mean, I don't understand how. Like when they, he, his talking heads get out there, the Yellens, you know, the troll lady, and all these other people in his administration are like, everything's great, everything's fine under Biden. Yeah, it's all in good. fact, here here she is saying exactly la- that mm-hmm. the goblin herself. <laughs> shows that U.S. is firing on all cylinders. Oh, yeah. I mean, in terms of short-term performance, inflation is coming down. The job market is very strong. Growth has um, mm-hmm. really right. been a lot stronger than I would have expected at this at this stage. We had 3.1% growth last year. Inflation's coming down. No, it's um, not. Labor supply is up. No. And um, we're seeing some of the pressures we might worry about coming from the labor market impacting inflation. They're nope. subsiding, but unemployment remains very low. Nope, you're high on shrooms. You're completely Everything's high. Everything's coming up roses. <laughs> no, it's not just <laughs> shrooms for her. So inflation was five point. It's it's average five point six percent under Biden. It was one point nine under Trump. Like the average thirty year fixed mortgage was around two point seven. Right Please before Biden took uh, took office, now it's what around like six seven percent for a mortgage. Is that it's what it is? Seven mm-hmm. seven percent is the average. I mean that. Holy crap, you guys! I mean that's it's insanity. You cannot. How can people look at that and think we're doing better? We're not doing better. We're so no. much worse. God, I cannot stand that little goblin woman. I know, I right? Hate her. All right, uh, moving on because we got to get to some Israel stuff and some I. At this point, if you are a pro-Palestinian ceasefire calling, per- you're out of your mind. You're just out of your mind. And unfortunately, as we've seen in Dearbornistan and some of these more radicalized parts of our own country, the the just outwardness that people are are saying things like death to America inside our own country by Americans that are saying that. It's just, it's blowing my mind how this narrative has taken root. Um, And so this guy, this first guy that you're going to see, Seattle public school teacher, who apparently posted about, you know, how 
Hamas was justified in doing what they did on October 7th. Here he is. Post said that their oppressors don't get to choose the form of resistance used against them. You didn't write that? That is true. Well, then was what happened to Israel on October 7th justified? Yes. The rape of women at a music festival was justified. Oh, my God. Where's the evidence that there was rape? You don't think there was any rape? Where's the evidence that there was rape? Okay. Were women murdered at the music festival? They were. Was that justified? Yes. The oh murder of innocent women just attending a music festival, that was justified in your opinion? No. I think resistance against Israel is justified, yeah. You know, and I get... What a piece of crap this oh guy is. So I that was, his name is Ian Golosh. He's a co communist activist and a teacher for Seattle public schools. He's a teacher, you guys. Can you even believe that? This guy's like an extremist whack job. And he's, and he's also, he got a, is that a man bun? That was like a really bad man bun. I don't know. Bun. I don't know what was going on up there. So that was happening. So yeah. Oh my God. It, I, that. And th he's not alone. I mean, this is a this is a this is a thought and idea yep. that is taking hold mm -hmm. of not just academia, which has always been a problem, but right. but young people are starting to actually <laughs> impact the way that the Biden is reacting to this entire conflict, that Democrats are reacting to this entire conflict, and unfortunately, even some Republicans. Like people are starting to lose sight of what October 7th was all about. Well, it's been six months. How can you God. expect them to even feel sorry for people? How can you expect them to, to be on the side of Jews after six months? I mean, you know, time has passed, Mock. You know. It's so infuriating. And mm -hmm. the fact that like they'll these are people that will easily they'll they'll be all outraged about the death toll of Palestinian civilians that Hamas is reporting. And it's the same Hamas who is like, oh yeah, hostages, we don't even know how many we have or where they are. We, I don't, we just, we've lost track of some of them, sorry. And then they're gonna believe these inflated numbers that, that Hamas is reporting about, you know, Palestinian lives, innocent Palestinian lives. How about you get out of innocent Palestinian neighborhoods if that even is such a thing so that, you're actually fighting a, a fair war, but they're never going to do that. And that's what people keep losing sight of. Greg Gutfeld had some great things to say about just the state of our culture when it comes to people making these death to America statements. Impression, you know, with the death to America stuff that we are on a, a slow roll toward our own little Gazas, these right. little islands of unrest in the country. These were places that were sacrificed to leftism, leftisms where laws were discarded, identity and division became the currency. You know, look at Minneapolis since George Floyd. It's never been the same. Right. There are all these enclaves. We were supposed to be a melting pot, but that requires melting. And instead, what we're seeing in these areas is a hardening. It's a hardening. And we're always accused of xenophobia if we exalt our country's awesomeness or make fun of another country's customs. Fair enough. I get it. But it's a two-way street. If you come here and you reject assimilation, free speech, cooperation with people different than you, those are our values. And if you reject them, you are xenophobic and you are anti-American. It's not illegal, I guess. But why are we respecting it and why are we encouraging it? Exactly. You know, leftism encourages this sort of behavior. It is time for the adults to enter the room and basically change the conversation or these cities are gone. Amen. They're already going. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. bad. And so is a whole and, generation, you know? I mean, there's so many kids and young people who just buy into this crap. I know. Uh, even, mille mi even millennials, like that, it, there's so many people who think that this is the case. It's like they weren't taught history and they don't, and and because of that, like a horrible byproduct of that is their belief system is so borked. It, I, I just, it, it, I don't even know how to unravel that. How do yeah. you undo that? Well, and so much of it is just born of pure ignorance. Like these people that are, you know, the students that will actually say that Israel are Nazis. Right. What I, do you, how uh, do you and even. That's, and that's, <laughs> and that to me is, is a lot of our educational system. It goes back to what yeah. I just said. And that is that they weren't taught, like they don't know. And so what they they get on TikTok and they're like, oh yeah, Jewish people are Nazis. What? And, or their, you, their teachers or that guy that we played at the very exactly. beginning of this segment. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's horrific.
I've got a flashback of Bill Clinton um, from 2016. I don't know what talk he was giving, but he was talking about how he had tried to do everything that he could to establish a Palestinian state, and it was constantly met with resistance. And he talks about Hamas's tactics. Here he is. Hamas is really smart. When they decide to rocket Israel, they insinuate themselves in the hospitals, in the schools, in the highly populous areas, and they are smart. So they try. So they wait, wait, wait. They so they try to put the Israelis in a position of either not defending themselves or killing innocents. They're good at it. They're smart. They've been doing this a long time. Look, I don't agree. I killed myself to give the Palestinians a state. I had a deal they turned down that would have given them all of Gaza. Wait, wait. All of Gaza between 96 and 97 percent of the West Bank, compensating land in Israel, you name it. This is never going to end until Hamas is gone, period. That, that there's only one solution to this problem, and it is to end Hamas, which is what yeah, Israel is desperately trying to do. They're trying to do that, but they're being met with, you know, advice mm -hmm. from us on how to do it. And I, you know, it's like... Uh, do people tell us how to fight wars? You know, like, do that's that this is what I'm getting so irritated about. Like last week, there was all these and I'm sure we have clips on this, but like the Kirby's and, and whatnot who are now they're sort of flip flopping and they're and they're getting aggravated on on and they're and they're becoming experts on how Israel should handle this war. I mean, if somebody came in to our country, they invaded us, they raped our women, they put our babies in ovens. Do you think that we would be like, let's just get all sorts of advice from everybody else on how to deal with this? <laughs> do you think we do that? I hope to hell not. I hope we would just go completely ballistic on the people that did that. Mm -hmm. I hope that that's what we do. And that's precisely what they're trying to do. They're trying to destroy the cancer that did that to them. Right. And then they're being met now after six months when they still have hostages, they're being met with, uh, you guys aren't being nice enough to the people over there. You're not, are you kidding? It's freaking war. It's so aggravating. And it's so aggravating that people have forgotten October 7th completely. Guy yeah. Benson um, was on Fox talking about that very the thing. The ounce of human suffering that is happening in Gaza right now is the fault of Hamas, right. which on October 7th, invaded Israel and slaughtered and raped and tortured 1,200 people and took a bunch of hostages, dozens of whom are still being held, including five Americans, one of whom had a daughter born in his absence. That's happening right now. And sometimes it feels like we're not even talking about that. So let's talk about it. I have some photos from my trip. This was last month to Israel. This is the home. We went to a kibbutz just north of Gaza, a home of a 23-year-old couple, beautiful couple. You can see the bullet holes just spraying all over the the corridor and that that opening area of their house, the foyer, they were both murdered right there. And that was a street filled with young families, all of whom were slaughtered in cold blood. Here's another one. This is from the music festival Nova. This is a makeshift memorial for those victims. That was the dance floor. What you're looking at. That's where people were going and dancing with their friends. Hamas showed up and killed hundreds of people. And the dance floor is now basically a graveyard. And then this is the heartbroken, desperate young woman I met in Tel Aviv. That photo is her sister. She is one of the dozens of hostages still held by Hamas. Hamas has rejected every ceasefire offer from Israel, including lopsided ones. And sometimes I feel like I'm slowly going insane watching the discourse around this issue where the hostages and October 7th is almost treated as an afterthought. It's not. It is the whole reason this yes. conflict exists. Yes, it's the whole damn reason. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah. And you know, it's crazy. Things are crazy when Michael Rappaport, who is insane by almost yeah. every measure. <laughs> he is insane. When, when he's calling out mm -hmm. fellow, fellow <laughs> Hollywood celebrities for their silence about this. This was stunning to watch because you forget that it's Michael Rappaport, who's yeah. a lunatic. Yeah. But here's what he said. And he's absolutely right. A bunch of Jewish people in my business who have made billions of dollars presenting themselves as Jews. 
the stereotypical Jew. But if you make millions and millions and millions of dollars and you have success presenting yourself as a Jew and you Jew it up for the camera and you have nothing to say when Jews are under attack, you should be ashamed of yourself. Those performers will be remembered in history as cowards, as pussies, because this is the time where you could have said something, done something. In Hollywood, artists say something about everything. Uh, women's rights, whether it's women's pay, whether it's a Black Lives Matter, inclusion, equality, LGBTQ, climate, everything. But to say nothing about the hostages, not one time, not one person say nothing about the hostages, the entire award season of 2024, from not just Jews, that's most important, that's number one, but from the entire community, for young 23-year-old actresses to accept awards knowing that there's 23-year-old hostages, to not acknowledge them during Women's History Month, that's on them. They know they're full of shit. When you're kill yeah, watching that transformation kind of makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> it just does. Because you know what he said in the past about so many people. And yeah, he's he's 100% correct on, on the, you know, on the people that should be standing up, though. Because yeah. there are so many people in his industry who are, in fact, Jewish. And then, you know, like at the award shows, you saw so much free Palestine, blah, blah, blah. And you didn't see one person. You know, the, like you just don't see a lot of those people like like the Jerry Seinfelds and whatnot. You don't see them being so overly vocal. You want to see these people need to stand up and they need to say the things. And they're not saying the things as loudly as the free Palestine people. And it makes you wonder why. Like, are they afraid? I'm assuming they're afraid. Why would they be afraid? I mean, well, it's it, like, do you remember right after October 7th, like any time that somebody was ripping down the pictures of the hostages, they would get blasted on yeah. Twitter and they mm -hmm. would get canceled from jobs or whatever. I don't think that would happen anymore. No, I, I, I agree. Now I agree their with narrative you. has taken hold and, and taken such root that it's impacting otherwise reasonable people. And that's why this last clip about this was so intriguing. Joe Rogan was obviously, he's been impacted by some of that narrative, which is, oh, these, so many Palestinian people are suffering and they, you know, yeah. they don't want any part of this. And there's so many thousands and it was only, it was only 1,200 people who died on October 7th, but now 30,000, 40,000 have died on the Palestinian side. It's too much and I just can't bear it. He was falling into that trap, but he got schooled pretty hard by Coleman Hughes, who really, and, and to Joe's credit, he listened. He was not like, pushing back. He listened and learned. And I thought this was such a powerful clip. 30,000 innocent civilians in response to something that killed 1,200 innocent civilians, and you're continuing to bomb an area into oblivion. Mm. That is at least the steps of genocide or a form of genocide. So when you say 30,000 civilians, it's not 30,000 civilians that have been killed, though. How many th thousands have been killed? So according to ha uh, Gaza Health Ministry, which mm -hmm. is run by Hamas. The number they have is 32,000, but they don't distinguish between Hamas and civilians. How so, many members of Hamas are there? 40,000, something like that. It's, I don't think the number is known, but it's tens of thousands. So Hamas says 32,000 people have been killed, mm -hmm. civilians and soldiers. Israel says 13,000 soldiers have been killed by Israel. Okay. So l let's not doubt either number. They could both be well, let's, inflated, but if both of those numbers are accurate, which they may or may not be, that would be 13,000 soldiers killed, 19,000 civilians killed, which for urban combat in the Middle East is a very normal ratio. It's very distinct from genocide, because genocide is when you're trying to maximize civilian casualties. Yeah. I think Israel, however imperfectly, is doing the opposite. They're trying to minimize civilian casualties. That's interesting. This is the way I would put it, succinctly. If you ask the question, what is unique about this war? What is different about this war than all other wars? It's it's not the civilian death toll. The ratio of combatants to civilians is, I think it's better than the American armies was when we got ISIS out of Mosul. That was like 10,000 civilians dead to kill 4,000 ISIS. This is 19,000 civilians dead to kill 13,000. What's unique about this war, unlike every other war that I could think of, is you have an army in Hamas that has perfected the art of embedding itself and meshing itself with civilians so that you cannot hit them without hitting the people around them. Other armies have done this, but none have perfected it to the extent that Hamas has.
And, and yes, I agree with all of the absolute tragedy and suffering of the Palestinian people, but what creates that is the way Hamas fights. And either we can say one of two things. We can either say Israel just, Israel doesn't have a clean shot and they have to let Hamas get away with it because it's too much to bear. But then we are essentially creating a situation where terrorists have found the perfect solution, which is that you can cross the border, go house to house slaughtering your enemies, and then hide behind your own people and they can do nothing about it. It's a perfect strategy. Can we live in a world where we allow that to be an acceptable strategy? I don't think so. And it's very ugly to watch. It's heartbreaking and I completely understand why people don't think the way I think when they see the videos. I completely get it. But I don't think we can actually live in a world where that's allowed to be a, a strategy. I appreciate your perspective. I see what you're saying. It's, he's 100% correct. And then I, you know, another thing I, I find really interesting in all of this, you know, we're, we're spending a lot of time talking about Israel and Hamas. We're, we're spending so much money. We've spent so much money on the Ukraine Russia war. What mm. about all their casualties? Nobody I mean, talks I, about that. Well, I looked it up yesterday. I'll tell you, there's been um, almost half, half a million. <laughs> So they, if you like the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, they reported there's a couple different reports, right? It's kind of all over the place. But like the general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces, its most recent estimate published, this was like in January, said that almost 380,000 Russian person personnel have been lost. Ukraine has lost 215,000 troops in 2023. That was a Newsweek, and they they had a hard time like substantiating that figure. But then there's like almost thirty thousand civilian casualties in Ukraine. There's a, I mean, I, you, the numbers are pretty staggering in that yeah. war. But we're not talking about that war, are we? Like nobody's well, except to fund it. Yeah, we're just sending shit tons of money, and but nobody's crying about those people. Nobody's crying about dead Russians or Ukrainians, are we? Is anybody like upset about that? I mean, I'm just. Why? I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, what's the difference? That's why it's so it's it's easy, I think, to suggest that when people push on freeing Palestine or when they get all in a tizzy about the casualties in this Gaza Israel war, it's anti-Semitic. Right. It just is. Because did, unless yep. you're having that same outrage over other wars, then you have an Israel problem. You period. do. I mean, exactly. That's... Exactly. It's like, Dan, you hit it on the head. You said, because it's not about Jews. You're right. It's mm -hmm. not about Jews. When we start talking about Jews, everything is different. Yeah. The rules are different. Uh -huh. Every, yeah. It's the standards right. are different. It's totally. All, it's all nonsense. It, it's all, it, it totally is nonsense. I get so sick of hearing about it. Take uh, all the seats. Karen Elliott. Thank you. Karen says W is for win. Sorry for the confusion. Love you. <laughs> That's from that earlier super sticker. Uh, screaming Mimi. Thank you. She just said chin balls. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Andrea. chin balls. <laughs> Andrea. Thank you. She says Biden taxed Social Security. Think about that. And Thomas Adams. Thank you. Thomas says why no calls for Hamas to surrender. Exactly. You, you never hear that. No. It's always what Israel should do. Never Release the damn hostages and freaking right. put down your arms and, and give up surrender. this ridiculous fight. Totally. Ah. All right. It's time for double Ds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Double Ds. You guys, I used to play the piano. I don't know if you know this, but um, I did. I used to play the piano. It was like, I was like a competitive piano player and all that kind of garbage. I've also often thought about taking it back up again because it's been years since I played the piano. If I did take it up again, I would try to get my dog or one of my dogs to do this. <laughs> is that not the greatest <laughs> is that not the greatest thing ever i love him i to play rachmaninoff you guys <laughs> hello i would now with your danes though that would not be a chin thing it would just be a step He'd right? have like to it like just be slap a... it. Yeah. Coda <laughs> would have to slap it. I mean, I probably could teach Theo to do the chin thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally. I love it. Um, there is a liberal who has put out a TikTok about the horrors that would result in a Trump presidency. And on accident, that person has laid out the best Trump ad ever. 
So this did not go the way that she thought it would go, which is what is so perfect about it. Wonder what Trump will actually do if he gets back into office. You don't have to speculate because he calls his plan Agenda 47. And spoiler alert, it's scary as sh**. Here's some of the worst ideas we're in store for if he wins in November. One, attacking immigration. Trump's anti-immigration policies will be even worse the second time around. He's promised to end birthright <laughs> citizenship, enlist and Sign me to up. up, and deport millions of undocumented immigrants and deploy thousands of U.S. troops to the southern border. Okay. Two, criminalizing LGBTQIA plus Americans. Trump says he'll ban gender affirming care for trans kids yeah, and prevent okay. schools from helping kids through their transition. He wants to forbid schools from even teaching anything about sex and gender that diverges from the far right's idea of the nuclear family. Three, overhauling education. Agenda 47 <laughs> includes huge changes to the oh education God. system. He wants to give huge benefits for homeschooling to indoctrinate kids with Christian nationalism, incentivize teachers to carry guns in their classrooms. Okay. Throw the crack down on affirmative action and destroy crucial details DEI departments at mm -hmm. colleges and universities. Four, restoring racist crime policies. Criminal legal system reform will be off the table if Trump becomes president. He promised to bring back racist policies like stop and frisk and other ineffective and discriminatory attack on crime tactics that totally effective. failed in the past. He also wants to increase protections for power abuse and police while rolling back hard fought for reforms and institute the death penalty for low level crimes like drug dealing. Okay. Five, weaponizing the government. The scariest part might be Trump's threat to more or less dismantle the federal government. <laughs> if he can I mean, it goes on and on. It's the best ad ever. And people, are, did you see that one comment? They were like, do, can I vote now or do I have to wait till November? <laughs> <laughs> I want to vote right now. Yeah. <laughs> It's the very best ever. God like, bless her. She didn't mean to do that, but no. she really sold him well. It was really good. Uh huh. Um, the Holderness family, for those who may have missed out on the eclipse, they have recreated it for yeah. people that may have missed it. That was pretty See? good. So there you go. It's, no, yeah. no worries if you missed the totality. That's basically what happened. <laughs> huh? basically. Um, this is not my my dogs are actually really really good at keeping toys together. I don't know if it's because we use BarkBox and their toys oh my are just really well made. Every single toy we have is shredded. <laughs> so you'll I definitely relate to this. <laughs> I could everyone. You will love this then. Yep. <laughs> That's that's my house. I'm always like, where did this fuzz? Oh, there it. Oh, it geez. was the dog toy. It's shredded that they got five minutes ago. That's great. Have you ever seen a dog strike a pose as well as this one? Can you go strike a pose. He's in a sweater. Oh my god! Get off there. That dog <laughs> strike a pose. Yeah. Can you go strike a pose. I love that so much. I got to tell you, if that dog had friends, his friends would be making fun of him. He's like, dude, you're in a coat. You're in like a padded I mean, is, coat. He is wearing a coat with a little collar. Like it, it's not okay. Him. It's de-dogifying. Dog yeah. <laughs> that dog is going to get shamed by all the, all of his dog friends. <laughs> cool. Um, There was, a, you know how much we love, everybody loves Miss Peaches. Like who doesn't love Miss Peaches, Ms. right? Peaches. So. <laughs> This gal that runs her own uh, rescue organization had the best idea ever. And if Dave Portnoy does not immediately give her millions of dollars for this idea, I don't even know what's wrong with him, but here she is. This message is for Miss Peaches, Dave Portnoy, and anybody at Barstool. So as we all know, Miss Peaches just hit a million followers. She deserves all of it and more. But I just had an idea. You should create a page called Barkstool that just reposts shelter and rescue dogs and just pictures of dogs looking for homes. I think that would be a great idea. And then great dogs idea. could find homes across the country. So that is my idea of the day. Willow agrees. And yeah, so that's my idea. Barkstool. Have at Barkstool. Are you kidding me? Uh, he's probably going to do it. He has to. He has yeah, to. Yeah, that's brilliant. And I hope he gives her like some props or like gives her a job or something. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. Yeah, it's perfect. It's like mm -hmm. the best best name ever. Yeah. Um, also, your daily cat. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> They're having a full on conversation. I just love them. 
they so cute? They're so cute. Oh my gosh. And now anyway, those are your talks for today, but we still have a whole other topic we have to talk about. Okay. Because I had not ever heard of this 4B movement. Yeah, this is really interesting. I did not know this was a thing. I learned about it yesterday. I went down a huge, or the day before yesterday, went down a big fat rabbit hole. You're going to learn about it. And it relates to a story that you're going to hear from this woman on TikTok who is dating and not having a good time dating. You guys, dating is hard these days. I'm so glad I'm married. Oh <gasps> my gosh. It Ugh. is. It sounds awful yeah. to be in the dating world right now. Mm -hmm. And this story is just awful. Listen. Well, guys, I think you finally succeeded. I think I have lost the absolute last shred of hope I had that there's still good men left in the world. Just went on a date. I thought it was going well. Talked nonstop, not me, back and forth for uh, over an hour. And then all of a sudden he had to take a call from a client and he never fucking came back. Oh and gosh. I got stuck with a $90 tab for his beers and pizza. Oh my God. So yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. 4B movement all the fucking way from here on out. You guys suck. Which then prompted the question. What, what the is 4B? Is <laughs> what is the 4B movement, right? What is that? Yeah. Right. And so I went down this giant rabbit hole, just literally just putting 4B in the search field. Um, and all these videos came up. And apparently it is a movement that started in 2016-ish in South Korea. And in South Korea, the patriarchy rules, women are oppressed, and they were sick of it. And so collectively, many, many women in South Korea decided, we're just not, we're opting out of the whole man thing. And they opted out of four things specifically, dating men, having sex with men, marrying men, and producing children with men. They, they said no to all of those things. And that was 2016. And 2016. And those four things in South Korean started with the letter B. So that's where that's what the 4B stands for. Okay. But now Western countries, including our own and including this woman, as you heard, um, they're now signing on to this movement and swearing off of dating and just wanting to have anything to do with men entirely. And it's actually impacting South Carolina or South Carolina. South Korea's population, they are seeing a huge decline uh, in the number of couples and the number of children, and it's becoming a concern, uh, especially because North Korea, they keep multiplying. Like, it's not as bad of a concern in North Korea. So it, it actually is a national security issue for South Korea. But the fact that this is even a thing is super fascinating, right? Like, the women are signing on to this. Yeah. I, well, listen, her story does really suck. Like what guy would, if you are going to do that, I mean, listen, if you don't like a girl, just like at least do what, um, <laughs> do what women do, which is have somebody on standby that you could text and be like, okay, say I have an emergency. You know what I mean? <laughs> or do but then split the bill at yeah, least. Split the bill. Out loud. Or do some, exactly. Do some, but don't just leave somebody with a bill. Like, don't do that. And try and be polite. And then I don't know. Just there. I feel like it, this is. It's not just a, a a man thing. It's a who's raising these people thing. Yeah. Like that guy obviously had a set of parents who didn't raise him well. And I, there's obviously more than that. And then there are women who are awful too. But I mean that. Like how, how did he, how did he do that? How did he get up and just freaking leave? I don't get it. Yeah. There were a lot of people asking her to name names because they wanted to make sure that they don't get taken by the same guy. Right. But she's apparently had enough bad experiences where she did that previously with another guy that treated oh her God. awful. She blast, she put his name on blast and then, and then he ended up stalking her, sending her death threats. She ended up having to get a restraining order against him. It was a total nightmare. And she's just like, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not doing this. I'm not doing it again. I'm just, I'm not naming names. I just, I'm telling my story and I'm getting the F out of this whole dating world because I can't deal. And it's just sad. It's yeah. Like somebody mentioned it's the female version of incels and it kind of is. Yeah, it is. It is. And I, I, I don't know why that's happening in our society. Cause it used to be that we, 
that people didn't do that. There was just a lot more intimacy between people. I think just overall, I, I think a lot of it has to do with social media. It has to do with, I, think about that though. I mean, because our society over the past 20 years has just declined in such a way when it comes to just people being humane to one another. Mm. That, I mean, I, I know I, I, we're picking on guys right now, but I think just overall our society, we, we've, we, we don't, we don't talk to one another. We don't connect with one another. There's just such a, we are, we are so disconnected as people. Like I even see it in my daughter's generation with, with friends. I always try to encourage her. I'm like, talk on the phone, make sure you're talking to people face to face, you know, do like, do all the things that I did when I was younger, because they just don't do that anymore. Right. And then somebody, somebody had the comment, bring back accountability. People aren't held accountable and they're not held accountable, especially when they're in a social media platform. You know, people are just downright awful to one another because they know they can be anonymous more now. And mm. we used to not have that back in the day, back in the before times. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, it's and just, is it possible that people just, I mean, at both sexes, I'm talking about both sexes, that people just suck harder now. You know yeah. what I mean? Like people are just worse people by and large in these younger generations coming up that are trying to date. And so God, I, you almost understand incels for, for swearing off horrible, horrible women. But then there's these women swearing off horrible, horrible men. And it's just like the good people are having such trouble finding each other. Uh, other good people. <laughs> And they're rarer. I think good people are rarer. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. And I then I, and then compound that with the fact that the good people aren't having as many kids anymore. And so where is that going to lead us as a society? It just that because I know a lot of like even conservative, really good conservative Christian, good people who are young people who are married that aren't they're like, well, this society sucks. I'm not going to have children. And that's happening. Yeah. So it, so it goes back to the whole South Korea. Those their population is being is being affected by that right. movement. We're being affected by this, probably by this kind of a movement, and then by so many other factors based on you know these sorts of things. And that, oh my God, it's I crazy. Know. It's yeah, it's so different. I'm so glad I don't have to date now. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I would be a nightmare. I would, it would. I would I just, just be, I can't imagine. I would be because I would not be able to, because I, if I were in that situation and that guy left and he left me with a bill, I would hunt him down. <laughs> I, I would. Well, I would. speaking of being hunted down, another woman got ghosted in a far worse way um, because this woman was actually married to the guy, uh, had a child with him, and also a baby on the way. And this is what happened to oh her. God. And go. It hasn't been 14 hours since Ashley McGuire made a Facebook post asking the world to help find her missing husband, Charlie Withers, who she believes just abandoned his family, two children. It's been a year since he left town, oh hasn't contacted God. the family. What the heck, Charlie, where are you? Last thing we know, he had opened a restaurant in Massachusetts where he was the chef, sold a crap ton of gift cards, and then just took the money and closed up shop, leaving all the customers and employees um, out in the dark with unpaid wages and unusable gift cards. Oh my! God. A lot of people are like, what in the heck is this foul play? And why isn't she worried about his safety? I don't know the answer to that. It just appears that she kind of knows he's abandoned the family. And since the post has been on the internet less than a day and we already have an update, it's kind of looking like that's the case. Texas-based Are We Dating the Same Guy group. This girl's like, uh, I'm pretty sure I matched with him on Bumble just a few weeks ago. What? Audacity. I really hope that he is found safely and quickly, but good Lord, this is a wild ride. Can uh, you even? Do we really want him to be found safely and quickly? <laughs> like if he's... <laughs> Well, quickly, she just wants to divorce him. Yeah. Like all she wanted to find him for is just to get rid of him officially because she's married to the guy and cannot and has children him. and has children with him. Can you? I, I just cannot. I cannot imagine. I mean, you think you know people, right? You think you know somebody. You have children with him and then that happens. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh my I want to find him quickly. All right. Yeah, people are saying that others have confirmed he's in Dallas. So, and who knows? He might have like a whole other family by how, now. I how mean, how do you think he's going to get away with that? 
<laughs> seriously. What? Just I, unreal. And again, with the accountability, like, dude, dude needs to be held accountable. Are there laws about this? <laughs> or can well, you, you can't, can't like, he can't get canoe. married again, right? Like, he can't, he no, can't just but I mean, get a second. Like, so I would think he would want to untangle from her as well, but he just doesn't want to pay her, clearly. If he doesn't care about the kids enough to see him, he certainly doesn't care about it supporting them. It kind of reminds me of that. Remember that Netflix documentary you told me to watch about the doctor? Yes. It was, and I can't remember the name of it now, but it was so fascinating. It was about this uh, guy. Who, he was just a complete scam artist, doctor. He was married, had a whole other family, and then was literally getting ready to marry somebody else in America. I think he was married. What was the, he was married in another country and was getting yeah. ready to marry an American journalist. And it was just like this, cr I just don't know how these guys think they can get away with it. It's, it yeah. was nuts. I can't remember the name of that guy. I know. But the, but the scammers are, they're good they, at what they do, man. Right. They it's just, good. it's insane how they think they can get away with it. Because listen, it, it, peop, the truth always comes out. There, it, it does. And so, but they think they can get away with it and they just keep doing it. What is that? I don't know. Yeah. And I don't know how I would even begin to advise someone now who is like, what's the best way to meet people and get in the church. dating world? I would be, yeah, exactly. Church. I, I, Go to church. There, I mean, you don't know. That's you don't right. No, I hear you because all. right because there could be some scam artist walking into a church just off the street. You're right. I mean, I would say church through through family. You know, it's got to I mean? be through people you know. Mutual connections. Yeah, that's the thing. But just like the swiping left on Tinder, maybe try to steer clear of that. Yeah, because it's because I mean because dang. I know, right? Like I just the, both of those stories, I was just like, wow. I mean, I that is he just left and this guy just left and people are just leaving. It's awful. It's absolutely awful. It is. It is. It's so crazy. I know people said work. Work is probably a good place too. Cause at least you've seen enough of that person. You see them so much during the day. Yeah. It used to be like, don't crap where you eat. You don't want to do that. But work is probably a great place to meet somebody, right? The grocery mm -hmm. store, Kenny said. <laughs> That's such a happenstance though. Right. Like you either, you, you, that it's all luck, right? Yeah. If you're there at the same time as somebody that's you potentially see, a good match. You want to see how somebody's handling the melons and then you can, you can gauge, <sighs> right? What a nightmare. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Craziness, you guys. Anyway, all be right. careful out there. <laughs> Everybody be careful and bring it in. <laughs> bring it in. You guys, what, what is it? What is today? Tuesday? Tuesday. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday, and we will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, everybody.